Chapter forty five of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by Becky Cook. Chapter forty five Women of History by Anonymous. Lady Fanshawe, born sixteen twenty five, died sixteen eighty. Geoffrey. Lady Fanshawe was, as is generally known, the wife of a distinguished cavalier in the heroic age of the civil wars and the protectorate, and survived till long after the restoration. Her husband was a person of no mean figure in those great transactions, and she, who adhered to him with the most devoted attachment and participated not unworthily in all his fortunes and designs, was consequently in continual contact with the movements that then agitated society. Since it may be said with some show of reason that Lady Hutchinson and her husband had too many elegant tastes and accomplishments to be taken as fair specimens of the austere and godly Republicans, it certainly may be retorted, with at least equal justice, that the chaste and decorous Lady Fanshawe and her sober, diplomatic lord shadow out rather too favorably the general manners and morals of the cavaliers. Lady Fanshawe seems to have followed, like a good wife and daughter, where her parents or her husband led her and who have adopted their opinions with a dutiful and implicit confidence, but without being very deeply moved by the principles or passions which actuated those from which they were derived. While Lady Hutchinson not only threw her whole heart and soul into the cause of her party, but, like Lady Macbeth or Madame Roland, imparted her own fire to her own phlegmatic helpmate, chastened him, when necessary, with the valour of her tongue, and cheered him on, by the encouragement of her high example, to all the ventures and sacrifices, the triumphs or the martyrdoms, that lay visibly across their daring and lofty course. The Lady Fanshawe, we take it, was of a less passionate temperament. She begins in her memoirs, no doubt, with a good deal of love and domestic devotion, and even echoes from that sanctuary certain notes of loyalty, but in very truth is chiefly occupied for the best part of her life with the sage and serious business of some nineteen or twenty accouchements, which are happily accomplished in different parts of Europe, and seem at last to be wholly engrossed in the ceremonial of diplomatic presentations, the description of court dresses, state coaches, liveries, and jewellery, the solemnity of processions and receptions by sovereign princes, and the due interchange of presents and compliments with persons of worship and dignity. But in her memoirs there is enough, both of heart and sense and observation, at once to repay gentle and intelligent readers for the trouble of perusing them, and to stamp a character of amiableness and respectability on the memory of their author. End of chapter 45